Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. Today's system is from the user Billion Jolly in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending their simulation. And this one seems quite interesting just by the name already, it's called the Zoraverse, Nemesis Nibiru Sun. Three stars, one hatable planet, humans find a new home in the Nemesis system after Earth was destroyed by the Eurasian Nuclear Defense, okay. So, let's see. What is this is all about? So, workshop, subscribe, where are we? There it is. Okay, let's have a read of this. Okie dokie. Right, where are we? Come on. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. It's taking some time to load in. That usually means there's a lot. Right, hello. Right. The Zora versus main three stars. Beds looking up like 34. That is what we are in. So, there's a description there as well. Made by uh, Vex Robot General Skywalker. Very nice. Right, here we go. Oh, even my computer's having a bit of a hard time. There's a lot of stuff in this simulation to load. Oh, it's a bit laggy. Right. Oh, I like the little disc around this. I'm not surprised it's lagging a bit with all this. Okay, so. Nemesis looking very, uh, a little bit spooky. So, Nemesis. It's an M7V red-orange dwarf star. It's a home of humanity after the Eurasian, um... So Eurasian nuclear defense launch. It has five planets. Nemesis's nearest neighbor is Nibiru, 0.97 light years away. Okay. Very nice. So. Let's have a look further out. So orbits can go on orbits. So here it is. We've got Nyx over here. So the first planet to Nemesis. It was named Nyx because of its dark lava covered surface. It possesses a very thin atmosphere as it is only 0.05 NAU new astronomical unit or 0 0.015 regular AU from Nemesis. Okay, so there's a new form of measurement in here. Interesting. So there's planet Y. Named such after its brilliant yellow colour. It is the second planet in the Nemesis system. It has a relatively thick atmosphere but lacks any visible cloud features. Okay, let's have a little look underneath this guy. So there we are. Underneath, there you go. Okay. So now we're heading to Hemera over here. This looks hadable. Okay, so is this the is this the safe haven for humanity? The third planet from Nemesis is it's a home of humanity after the Eurasian nuclear defense raised most of Earth. It is the same size as Earth and also has the same mass. It is currently the most hatable planet ever discovered. Very nice. So a little ring around it as well, very cool. Interesting city light looks on that as well. Very nice. Looking good. Cool. So we've got a load of uh, asteroids here. So the next planet out is this one. Tell Sheena over here. Fourth planet in the Nemesis system. It is an icy world and prevents most of the asteroids from the outer belt hitting Hemera. This one is covered in icy layers which indicate it may be habitable, albedo massive if warmed up. Nice. There you go. Planet out is this one Ram Nuisia. It's an ice giant and last confirmed planet around Nemesis. It possesses a dark ring system and one major moon. It's the largest planet in the Nemesis system. So there it is, pretty big. It's got its own ring system as well. There it is, 3.4 Earth. So you know, roughly a sort of Uranus Neptune kind of size by the looks of things. Yeah, okay, a little bigger. Um, and then the one moon around it, too. The only major moon it is a rocky, barren, and frigid, named after one of the uh, Telesheen's Nemesis's children. Telescenes, I think that's how you say that. Cool. Right. So, what is next? So, we're leaving the Nemesis star behind. Taking a big jump now. So, what's going, what's going on here? Right. Right. Ooh, we're zooming out. Okay, what's going on? Okay. Ooh. So, you can see the sun over there of what's left of our solar system, I'm guessing. So, we're going to Nibiru first. So, what have we got going on here? So obviously some theoretical solar system objects in here will be put together in one giant system. Here it is, a brand of Also with a little disc around it, very nice. Nibiru is the closest system to Nemesis. It is a brand of and named Nibiru because it was once a ground energy bound to Nemesis. It won't bring about our destruction, fortunately. Okay. So first off, the planets around here. Obviously, this is complete darkness because Brandwarfs in this version of the game don't emit light. So we need to go to. Hang on. 
that one. Let's go to studio, please. Yep, there it is. Very nice. Interesting looking body. I'm guessing that's a Pluto texture that's been merged in there. It looks pretty cool. There's the brown dwarf in the background looking very, very menacing. Okay. So this one here is a molten lava world covered in an ocean of red lava. The lava um, is what granted the planet its name. Um, it's close to being destroyed by its host. It's pretty close, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Next object out. Tartarus. Let me just uh, do the setting again. You've got to do it when you're further away. So here it is. Tartarus, once known as Nibirian Planet X or Nibiru X, is a lava planet around Nibiru. It matches with a common depiction of the rogue planet as a molten object. Okay, nice. Then we got Nibirus here. Is that how you say it? I've always heard weird pronunciations to Nibiru. Nibiru. Never known if I've actually said it myself correctly. <laughs> but yeah, it is. So, N Nibirus. The Latin sounding deriving name of Nibiru, it is the interpretation of Nibiru as an ice giant or gas dwarf. Um, it's much like a Ram Luisia, just less massive. No, it is also a ring system. Very nice. Then over here. Next planet out. So this one is a very windy and stormy ice giant planet. It was named after the planet from the movie due to its similar appearance. The planet is the largest and most distant in the Nibiru system. Nice. Got some moons around it as well. They do not have any descriptions of those things. Okay, so where are we heading next? Well, hang on, no, they weren't. Eh? No, hang on, sorry. No, they are. So, that one is the first. So, Elin, named after one of the comets thought to be in Nibiru. It is an icy moon similar to Europe to Orbiton. It may have a subsurface ocean. Okay, and then lastly, we've got Ison over here, which is here. Another moon named after a comet that was brought to uh, Nibiru. It is an icy moon just like Elin, only a bit farther. It may also have a subsurface ocean. Excellent. Right, so that's all of the uh, hidden objects and the far distances from our own solar system. So what is going on in our own solar system now? As this is following the destruction of something that happened. So what is going on here? The sun. This is the remains of the solar system, in fact. Oh, let's see what's going on here. There's a few extra objects in here. There is an Earth here, okay. Here is the Sun. There's definitely some interesting things going on here. What is this? So we've got four knacks around the Sun. So the Sun is the nearest star to Nemesis, and once a star where a prosperous planet Earth orbited, it is a G2V main sequence star, far brighter and hotter than Nemesis, and hosts the largest known planetary system. Sol is the brightest star in the Hamurian night sky, beating out Sirius A. Excellent. Right, so first up we've got four axes. What's this all about? So here it is. First planet from the sun. It faces blazing temperatures higher than Venus and has a molten lava covered surface. Four Nax seamlessly spawned in its current orbit in 2024, but due to its low mass and closeness to the sun does not affect the inner solar system. It has not been explored at all due to its inhospitable environment. Yeah, it's looking pretty, uh, pretty close to the sun. Right, so then we have Vulcan. It's a Vulcan in here as well. Also in a, in a little asteroid belt closer in. Let's go back to realistic lighting. That's better. So Vulcan. Looking pretty good. It's the second planet from the sun. I hypothesized to exist before the 20th century to account for this first piece in Mercury's orbit. Einstein disproved it in 1815, but was rediscovered in 2024. <laughs> Vulcan is filled with volcanoes, but unlike Fornax, its surface is not completely molten. Vulcan is thought to have a common origin. It's just as genotically active as Io. Oh, not fun. There it is. It's a similar look to Io as well. Very nice. Right, so Mercury, the third planet. You ever heard Mercury being the third planet? Oh, yes. There it is. That looks like Mercury as we know it. Brown airless rock, rich in resources, and useful as a solar power farm. Mercury is small and heavily cratered with no atmosphere to weather away the craters. It has been explored sparingly given its proximity to the sun and difficulties from Vulcan and Fornax's gravity. The Dyson Swarm concept was planned to launch here. Okay. So, moving on to Venus now. Here it is. So, Venus looks like it's as we've always known it. So, the fourth planet from the sun and is one of the most hostile places known to life. It is enrouded in heavy clouds of sulfuric acid with an atmosphere pressing down on the 92 times pressure. It slowly spins, ret uh, slowly in retrograde, 
White winds circle the planet in four days. Venus has one of the hottest atmospheres in the solar system, only by Fornax and Vulcan. So, I'm guessing it's the same old, isn't it, underneath? Have a quick look. Yep, so there you go. There is Venus. Right, so Venus has a moon here, Neef. I think this was a theoretical object, wasn't it? Or something. So Neef was an ancient moon of Venus. It is thought to have been um, sighted in the 1700s and 1800s, but it was later proven to be multiple stars coincidentally close to Venus. Later in 2006, the idea of a Venusian moon in the early solar system was proposed as being responsible for Venus's odd rotation. It's an interesting theory, really. Um, Eurasian simulations and observations from Venus in the 2030s and 2040s prove this hypothesis correct. Uh -huh. There it is. Secret moon of Venus. Right, so what is going on at Earth here? So, there was some sort of incident here. Let's see, look at the planet. Doesn't look good, does it? Oh, oh yes. Earth is the cradle of humanity and our first home. It was once a beautiful homo-like world, but most of its surface has been destroyed by the Eurasian nuclear defence. The last sand against totalitarianism by sole surviving nation on the planet, Eurasia, which is currently the only place inhabited on the world. Most of humanity moved to Hemera or Blackout after the destruction. So not looking good, is it, the Earth? It's, uh, looks like a wreck. Look underneath. There it is there. It's pretty dead. Pretty bashed up, as you can see. Craters smashed. Bashed. It's like new continents almost being made here. Look at all that. Almost linking up. I mean, look at that. That's not, not looking good, is it? Oh, dear. You can see that literally all of Europe and Africa, North America, are all combined as one huge continent. Look, you can see it's all combined there. I think Antarctica is the only thing that isn't. You see, Australia is all combined all to. All, oh yeah, it's all it's all pretty much combined. Ah oh man, not looking good, is it? Oh dear. So we've also got the moon over here, Luna. The Earth's only moon and was largest competitor's planet. It was meant to be a heavily industrial zone. But the dystopian age of Earth prevented most expansion of space and its industrialization. Luna shone brightly in Earth's sky and still would if it weren't for the thick cloud cover. It is the largest moon of the inner solar system. Yes, there it is. The moon. There you go. Right, so what is this? So we've got Oceana over here. An all ocean world. It's a planet that suddenly appeared in 2024 alongside Fornax and Vulcan with a gravitational shield set up around it. Um, so not to disturb the orbits of the rocky planets. It is thought to not have any land, its surface is completely covered in water, it has a ring system and a breathable atmosphere within the shield, allowing it to retain both. Excellent. There it is. Okay. We have Mars. Next up, Mars. Anything different at Mars? There it is. Same old Mars. Rocky planet covered in iron oxides, giving it a characteristic red-orange colour. It captured the attention of humanity as a potential new home despite being very inhospitable. Mars has the largest mountain volcano and longest valley in the solar system. Some exploration of Mars has been successful, mostly consistent of rovers, but in a few living astronauts have set foot on Mars in 2045 at the beginning of the dystopian age. So there it is. Okay. So we have Faye in here as well. So where's Faye? So Faye is a lot further out now. Oh yes, okay. Right. Faye is the planet that collided with Earth to form Luna. It was first proposed by the giant impact hypothesis, which was later proven correct after Eurasian scientists found the blueprints to reconstruct Faye on the planet Oceana. It was rebuilt um, in what was an asteroid belt and finished in 2080. Interesting. Rebuild a planet. There you go. We have this one next over here. Is it Phaeton? It was the final reconstruction project in the solar system. It's very similar to Phaeton and Planet 5. It was thrown out of the asteroid belt and impact of the sun disintegrating. Reconstruction began in 2090. There it is. Okay. And there's also Planet 5. I skipped that one, sorry. So we've got this one here, Planet 5. It's a planet thought to be responsible for the late heavy bombardment. Planet 5 remained hypothetical until its blueprints were found alongside those of Theia, Phaeton, Kion, and Trilita. The planet did collide with Mars, reconstruction finished in 2085. Okay. Right, the other planets. I can't add description because of limits, okay? I mean, that's fine. I mean, it's obviously just due to Saturn. You know, the usual. Any, this doesn't look like there's any visual differences there. There's also this object here called uh, Chaos. I guess this is one that was rebuilt. Or is that just Uranus with a different name? It looks like Uranus with a different name. We've got. This one over here, Kyone, 
I've not heard of this hyper full one, I don't think. It's 20 degrees, pretty, uh... I'm guessing this was the planet that would have collided with Uranus. Because it's a rocky planet in the orbit, roughly, of Uranus. Uranus isn't called Uranus yet, so I'm guessing both of those combined would make Uranus. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't know. you got Neptune as well. And I'm guessing this over here would be what is the moon Triton eventually, maybe? I don't know. Trieta? Try I don't know. Okay. Let's zoom out from that. And I'm guessing after that it's just the same old outer solar system, or is it? Petra Vis Zena here. So I don't I don't recognise these names of hypertrophal planets. Over there. Few objects that have broken away. We've got T-Show here. I recognise that name. There's a few escaped objects as well. Lots of gas giants. Okay. I mean, one of those would be the, the fifth giant planet, wouldn't they? Okay. Interesting. But there we go. So that does it for this alternate apocalyptic future where humanity moved to the nemesis system out there in the depths past and beyond our solar system. So pretty cool. So nemesis itself. There we go. Sitting on the... Uh, edge of the solar system a long way away with its very mysterious looking glow in effects there you go we are one enhanced aren't we realistic yeah enhanced. yeah okay so there it is nemesis looking very nemesis yes also you had nibiru over there looking pretty that would look pretty good as well actually with its little uh ring around it yeah there you go that looks pretty awesome but there we go so that does it for the system so again a massive thank you to the creator of this system billy and jolly for sending this in i enjoyed that i always like these alternate sort of future reality ones and stuff like that the alternate reality of our own solar system those sort of things they're always quite interesting to me so yeah i enjoyed that hope you guys did as well and with that all said everybody if you enjoyed this video let's even go for 100 likes on today's video as well subscribe for more help us on the journey to 50,000 subscribers everybody with that all said and done make sure you have a great day stay safe out there and i'll see you in the next video Goodbye.